This video is going to be about finding the net force on an object. And to find the net force, we always start by drawing what's called a force table. Um, the table looks like this. I'm going to label what each part means. The top here means the sum of the forces in the x direction and the sum of the forces in the y direction. That symbol next to fx and fy is a sigma. Um, it means the sum of, so that just means um, what's coming below is equal to all the forces added together. In the next part of the table, you're going to add together all the horizontal forces that appear in your problem and all the vertical forces that appear in your problem. And then on the very bottom, you're going to write the sum of forces in each direction, and that will be the net force. So the net force just means the sum of all the forces in each individual direction. So I'll show you how to do this. Let's say that we have a problem that looks like this with some forces in the perfectly horizontal and vertical direction and others that have certain angles to them. So we want to know what is the total net force in the x direction and the total net force in the y direction. To do do that, I'm going to start by taking the x and y component of each individual force that has an angle, and this will help me sort that force into the two parts of my table. What part of this force is contributing to the y and what part is contributing to the x? So now I'm going to look at just the x components, just the things that are happening in the horizontal direction, and I can see here I have an 8.7 and a 3 pointing to the right and a 6.4 pointing to the left. Usually when I do this, I call right positive and left negative, so I'm going to record those two numbers to the right as positive and the number pointing to the left as negative. And then when I add these three things together, I get a total net force of 5.3 in the x direction. So that means that all the things happening in the x direction are adding together into a single force that has a magnitude of 5.3 newtons to the right. And now if I look at the y direction, I'm going to consider up to be positive, so I'm just going to take everything that's happening in the y and put it on the table. So I have 7 going up, 5 going up, 6.4 going down, so that's negative, and 5 going down, so that's also negative, and this comes out to be 0.6 newtons when I add these forces together. So altogether, there's an upward force, because up is positive, of 0.6 newtons when I add all the things in the y direction together. So that means that all of these forces are behaving like a single x direction force of 5.3 to the right, and a single y direction force of 0.6 up. There will be many times when we know the net force and need to solve for specific forces. Here we're going to pretend we know the net force is zero in both directions and find relationships between the different variables. So looking at this problem, I can see that I have one force that has an angle, so I'm going to break it down into its x component and its y component and then look at what's happening in the x direction. So I can see, again, if I'm considering right to be positive, I'm going to record that first number as positive and the force of friction pointing to the left as negative, like that. And in the y direction, I can see I have two forces pointing up, one pointing down, so this is how I'm going to record those. And so now I get from my table, because I know in this specific case that the total net force in both directions is equal to zero, I can solve for new relationships between the variables. So when I rewrite that table, I can see that ft times cosine of theta minus force of friction is equal to zero, and ft sine theta plus the normal force minus the force of gravity is equal to zero. So if I rearrange these a little, I get some identities. I can see that the force of tension times cosine of the angle is equal to the force of friction. So that's an interesting result. That's a way I can solve for one of these missing variables. And the force of tension times sine plus the normal force is equal to the force of gravity. Again, an interesting result. I could use that to solve for some of the variables that I have here. So that's how you solve problems using that force table. Um, for a lot of the problems in this unit, the net force will always equal to zero. So for the most part, you're going to be expected to find missing forces using that force table.